Hello there beautiful people, we are at the final part of the series, this has been awesome so far, hopefully you enjoy them, uh, yeah, it's been a blast. And, and if you find it a bit boring, hey, it's totally understandable, but this one is going to be a bit more exciting because we're going to interact with our CSS and our HTML. So if you've been wondering, if you're like super new to JavaScript and you've been wondering, uh, how is this going to help me in any way? Well, we're going to get to it now. <laughs> so uh, what I did is I just added a CSS and I linked it to my HTML. And in here, I'm just going to add something called a H1 and we're going to say hello. And we are also going to add a button. So click me like so. Perfect. Here in our JavaScript, we can get those elements uh, from our HTML page. And the way we do them is we create a variable. So we're going to say, let's, let's just get the text that we wrote. And the way we can do that is by something called document. So document is basically going to access our HTML here and we write dot and there are different methods that we can use. And the most popular one uh, is called something called query selector. And with query selector, we can pretty much grab the element and store it inside the variable. So here uh, we add parentheses and add some simple quotes. And here we can write H1 like so. Now you're probably not going to have it like this. You're probably going to have a class on this. So we're going to add a class of title to this. So the way we can access the specific class is the same way we can do it in CSS. So by writing dot title and let's add it to the button as well. We're going to add a class of change color. And in here we can const change color is equal to document dot query selector. We're going to say change color like so. Nice. So we got those elements. Let's see what we have in our HTML. We can close this. As you can see right there in the corner, I'm going to zoom this in like so, so we can see everything a bit more clearly. And we can manipulate these any way we want. So we can do something like text dot, and there are a lot of different methods that we can use. So a popular one that we can use is something called style. And here, if you write dot again, we can access everything that we have in CSS. So maybe color, if we set this equal to red, we can see that it's red now. Nice. We can also access something called uh, transform, and then we can translate this any way we want. And one thing to keep in note is there are a few of them like background color that is not going to work with the normal line like so. So the only difference here is that we need to uppercase the color and then it's going to work just fine like so. Ooh, that red is hurting my eyeballs. So we can do different things uh, in our JavaScript. We can manipulate them. Uh, another popular thing that we can do is add classes to them. So the way you can add classes, well, let's create one here and we're going to call this, let's say change, change color. The same thing we did so far. We're going to add color light blue and we're going to change the, let's just change the font size to 50. 100 pixels as well. Uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna add change. All right, and then we are gonna add a border of 10 pixels, solid black. Okay. Now the way we can add classes is saying text dot class list. This is gonna access all the classes that the text has, and then we can do dot add, and in here we can just say change like so and if we take a look look at that <laughs> we have this 
beautiful looking um, class. Now we can also remove one if we want by adding remove and we can toggle which we are going to get into just a bit. So I added this button because I kind of wanted to hit two stones with one and also cover event listeners. So what an event listener is, is basically a function that's going to execute depending on what the event is. So you can have a click event, you can have a scroll event. So maybe you can have the change color here. And if we add the event listener, and this is basically a function that's going to take two parameters. It's going to take the event, so a click. So if you want uh, something to happen when you click on something, maybe when you scroll, maybe when you uh, press your keyboard down, there are tons of events out there. I'm going to leave on in the description a bit of note on where you can find all the different events uh, that you can use. So let's cover one click in here. And here we can just create a simple function and like so. So again, let me go back a bit because this can be a bit confusing. So <laughs> just we have the click here and we the second parameter is going to be the function. So what's going to happen here is when we click, this function is going to be executed. So this function is not going to be executed when the page loads, only when we click. And this is something called a callback function. So after we click, the callback function gets executed. Okay. So in here, we can do something like text dot class list dot add. And we can do, <laughs> I don't remember, change. There we go, change. So if we hit, hit save, we're going to see that when we click, boom, the class gets added. Now, another cool thing we can do is add toggle here. So not add, we can add toggle. Now, if we click and if we click again, it's going to remove that class like so. Nice. So that's an event listener. Um, another cool thing that we can do is let's say we have multiple texts in here. So let's say we have a nav and we have a UL and just have some allies actually. Uh, a UL with a couple of allies. Add, copy paste this multiple times. We're going to say John. Joe, boy, and ooh, Harry. There we go. So let's name this, add a class to the UL, and we are going to name this hmm, name list, like so. Let's add the, like this, okay, name list. So we have a name list with the allies. So Another thing we can do is we can select all of the lists at the same time. And the way we can do that is we're going to say const user list is going to be equal to document dot query selector. And we're not going to be using the query selector. We're going to be using the query selector all because we want to get all the lists inside this UL. So the way we can do that is we can say name list li. So we're going to select the nameless class name list. Oh, we need the quotes dot since this is a class name list li like so. And this is going to return us if we console log user list. It's going to return us all the lists in here. Zero, one, two, three, four, as you can see. Good. Nice. So we can also take these and manipulate them the way we want. And remember, in the last video, we used loops. So hey, we can use loops again. <laughs> and a cool way we can do them is say for, we can say user of user list. Okay. And here we can access each individual user and do something to it. And we can get the user, so each individual list and we can add an event listener 
to each. And then let's say we want to listen on a click. And here we can run a function. And if you remember in my previous video, we can use the keyword this, which will mean the element that we're going to click on. So this, in this context, console log, this is going to be each list. Click, 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 as you can see. So again, just look at the left and you're going to see what this is. So what we can do is also do something like this dot style dot color. It's going to be equal to red. And now every time we click on this, it's going to change its color. So that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe you can do something like you have a button on each and every time you click, you can delete or you can add. Uh, you, we can also use something called, let's do add an input in here. So below our, M, our UL, we can add an input type text. We're going to add a class of um, Let's add a list input. We can get it in here by calling const list input. I'm going to camel case it here. We're going to say document dot query selector. And we're going to get the list input like so. And the way we can get the value is by list input dot value. Cool. So let's delete this and modify a few things. All right, there we go. We're going to delete this as well. And here, let's say we want to change the functionality of this button. It's going to add a list, add list button, like so. Copy this. We're going to go back here. We're going to say add list button. It's going to be equal to document.querySelector. And we're going to add list button, like so. So add list button. We can add an event listener to this and on click, we want to run a function. So what we can do here is we can create an element. So we can create an LI. We can add the value of the input inside that LI, and then we can attach it to our list. So there are three things that we need to do here. Create an LI out of tin air. We need to add the input value inside that new LI that we created. And then we need to basically add the LI to the user list in here. So attaching the LI to the user list. Okay, so let's do these three. Okay, so there's one thing I modified before we get into this. I removed document query selector all and I just added name list. So right now all we're doing is we're console logging and we're just getting the UL. Okay, so we're not getting each individual list, we're getting the whole UL. Okay, so how do we do this? So we need to create an LI out of tin air. Uh, I know that sounds magical, but it's way simpler than you might think. So we're going to write a const called new li and we're going to set this equal to document. And here we have access to something called create element. How nice. And here we can create a button. We can create an li. We can create whatever we want. In this case, I'm going to create an li. I'm going to uppercase it all like so. And what we can also create is uh, some content, okay, some value that we can insert into this LI. And the way we do that is we're going to write const and we're going to say uh, LI content is going to be equal to, and I'm going to say uh, document dot create text node. Okay. And here, rather than passing something random, we want to dynamically add whatever we get from the input. So remember, we can get the value of that input. Let me just add something random in here. But if I console log list input, we are going to get the input. 
like so. And if we do dot value, we are going to get the value. Nothing. There we go. So what we can do is we can dynamically add this in here, like so. Good. Now what we need to do is attach this content to the li. So let's do that. The way we do that is we write new li dot append child. And we can add the li content in here. Good. So we attached, we appended the content to the list. And now we need to append the list to the user list. <laughs> uh, inception all over again. Okay, so user list dot append child and then we can do new li let's see what we have add boy click me we get add boy js series we get js series so there we go but yeah that's it we finished our JavaScript series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing more series in the future, but for now we're going to get more into project-based uh, tutorials. So thank you. Thank you again so much. Drop a subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>